We welcome you today to the Sunday broadcast of the First Pentecostal Church of Baruch in Palmetto, Louisiana. We are so happy that you have chosen to uh, watch today. Our hope and prayer is that you will be encouraged and that you will be blessed. Thanks again for connecting with us this Sunday. you but I am looking so forward to the day in which we can all gather back here together under this roof and have good church but until then we have tools we have Facebook and YouTube to help us all try to keep connected and stay connected the best that we can thanks again today for tuning in we we do appreciate it second Kings chapter 7 verse 3 and there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit here until we die? If we say we'll enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, and let us fall into the host of the Syrians, if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Every character we read about in the Bible, on many occasions we can see ourselves in those characters, whether uh, we are living in a similar situation or not. We can look at the characters in the Bible, and if nothing else, we can look to them, those characters, and learn from them. And in the Bible we can read, 
We can read and observe and learn what not to do and what to do. And also by reading, by reading about the Bible characters, their story and their experiences, it gives you and I hope. It gives us hope. And we are reminded of the fact that nothing is too hard for God. Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Paul. Remember the story? Paul was shipped. He, he got a shipwreck uh, on an island. And, and he was also a prisoner. And then things got worse even after the shipwreck there on the island. Uh, you see, he was putting wood on the fire. And, and the Bible tells us that a snake come out of the wood and it attached itself to his hand. And, and, and you know what he did? The Bible tells us he just kind of shook the snake off back into the fire. There are some things, some things you have to shake off and then get up and move on. Remember Jairus in the New Testament? His situation at home involved, involved a child. And, uh, she was a daughter and, and, and he and his wife no doubt had tried everything. And he finally went to Jesus and asked for his help. And Jesus healed Jairus' daughter. If you feel like this Sunday that maybe you're in the lion's den or the fiery furnace or your life is shipwrecked and the hounds of hell are, are nipping at your heels. And if you have a situation at your home and you're really at your wit's end, you could continue to wrestle around with that situation until your all your strength is gone and your sanity is depleted and you die there in your misery or you can get up and go find Jesus. Jesus is not afraid. And I'm thankful for this. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. So it doesn't bother Jesus in the least bit that you're bloody or dirty or mad, or frustrated, or depressed, or restless, or that you have some doubts. It doesn't bother Jesus in the least that you don't have a whole lot of money, or you have just a few friends, or that you don't have a spotless life. It doesn't bother the Lord. As a matter of fact, we all, every one of us, every one of us has a past. And we've all did things in the past that we're not proud of. But the good news today on this Sunday is this. You don't have to get good to get God. You don't have to get good to get God. You come to Jesus just as you are and He'll help you get good. So don't just sit there. Get up and get to Jesus. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 and then also verse 19. Love this scripture Verse six. It says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. I love that. I love that. I also, I love the story. I love the story. Maybe you've heard me uh, tell the story before of the late Reverend Rick Lumpkins. He told about his mama. You see, Brother Lumpkins was an evangelist for many years, and he every Sunday would go and preach at a different church. And at the end of Sunday night service, on his way home, or when he got home, he would always call his mama and check on her. And he would usually, after chit chatting for a minute or two, he would always ask his mom, Mom, how was your church? How was your church today? And she would usually tell him, oh, it was, it was okay. Nothing really happened. No, nobody was seeking God. It, it, it was kind of dry and, and dead. And week after week, Reverend Lumpkins would call his mom on Sunday and he would ask her the same question and she would always, always answer the same way. And finally, one Sunday, he called her and he asked her, Yet again, how was her day at church? She said the same thing, basically. All church was kind of boring. It was bland. And nothing really happened. And before he even realized what he was telling his mama, Brother Lumpkin said, Mama, why don't you do something about that? Why don't you do something about that? 
And she said, now son, now you know I'm, I'm old, I'm, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm limited physically. What could I do? And he said, Mama, if all you can do is sit there in your wheelchair and, and wiggle a finger for Jesus, you just wiggle that finger. Do something. Don't just sit there. Do something for Jesus. And today, on this Sunday, I'm here to tell you, no matter your circumstances, it does not matter what they are, do something. And the best thing you can do is get up and get to Jesus. Cry out to Him. Call His name. Seek His face. Pray. Get up and move toward God. Don't just sit there and be miserable and eventually die where you are in, in your condition. You can get up and you can get to Jesus. At least put forth some effort to get up and get to Jesus. You see, if you would take a step toward the Lord Jesus, He would take two steps toward you. Jesus loves you and He is truly a Savior you can depend on. It's been a while. If it's been a while for that, since you prayed, if it's been a while since you prayed, if it's been a while since you read your Bible, if it's been a while since you've been to church, if it's been a while since you have lived, you have lived for Jesus and been completely sold out to Him, if it's been a while since you've been fully committed to the Lord, then what? Truly a great time right now during this COVID-19 stay-at-home situation to find your way back to Jesus. And then, once you do that, as long as you keep putting God first in your life, above all else, everything is going to work out for your good. There are some things you just can't fix, no matter how hard you try. There are some things you can't heal. There are some things you just can't make better. All you can do, though, is get up and get to Jesus and trust Him. You see, Jesus still offers healing and salvation and direction and restoration. Jesus, thankfully, still offers peace and comfort and joy in the Holy Ghost. Get up! Get up and get to Jesus. You... Don't have to wait any longer. You don't have to wait till you come back to church. But where you are right now today, wherever that is and wherever you are, if you will, get up. Get up. And if you get up, you can get to Jesus. If you tried every